It's Friday, March 25th, and the time for your body is today morning news update. Immigration officials are investigating the conditions under which a group of Haitian visitors, including small children, are being housed in the basement of a property at St. James. Our Karim Smith has more in this report. The visitors are staying at a gated three-story house. The landlord is said to be staying on the third floor, a Barbadian tenant and some Haitians on the floor below in separate two-bedroom apartments and the others in the basement apartment. A joint immigration and police operation was conducted at the building on Monday, but Acting Chief Immigration Officer Margaret Innes said she could not disclose the details despite concerns from residents about what, in their opinion, is a potentially dangerous situation. Barbados Today investigations, however, reveal that the approximately 33 Haitians who arrived on Sunday, February 20th through a travel agency were granted an in-transit visa in Barbados for 15 days on a journey ultimately bound for Guyana and or Brazil. The agency, which is called MPH, has been paid undisclosed sums of money to acquire airline tickets, travel visas and other essentials for the Haitians who are said to be fleeing social economic and political instability in their home country. But having overstayed their welcome with no definitive word on if or when they would be continuing their journey, frustration ensued. Barbados's ambassador to the Caribbean community, David Comachon, after making some inquiries, revealed that the group's in-transit visas in Barbados had in fact expired, but their visas for passage to Guyana had not been approved. Kareem Smith, for Barbados today. The Sandy Lane Hotel wrongfully dismissed three of its employees 10 years ago. The Caribbean Court of Justice, Barbados's highest court, delivered that ruling on a Thursday. The judges also ordered the luxury hotel at St. James to pay the former workers, Juliana Cato, Wayne Johnson and Charmin Poyer, damages they had claimed back in 2012 and to foot the bill for their legal costs as well. Emmanuel Joseph has been following the case and files this report. While lead attorney for the ex-employees Edmund King QC was elated at the judgment, legal counsel for Sandy Lane, Satra Kisun, told Barbados Today in a brief response that the CCJ's decision was hard to swallow. When asked about the damages which the ex-hotel staffers were claiming, King said it would not be appropriate to comment on it now because the final figure had to be agreed between the two sides, failing which the matter must return to the magistrate's court for determination. But on the question of the wrongful dismissal ruling, Kesun remained adamant that Sandy Lane was justified in terminating the workers and found the judgment troubling. The issue that uh, we have is that uh, we've read and understand the CCJ ruling, the CCJ's ruling. Um, the difficulty we have is that there was a contractual mechanism by which Sandy Lane could have terminated, and they engaged that. The issues that they framed in the termination letters were as a courtesy to enable the employees to understand why they were triggering the contractual um, right on the part of Sandy Lane. What the CCJ has said is that by making it, um, by make by stating the reason, it accords with their having had to have been a disciplinary process. We find it troubling because if Sandy Lane had given no reason and simply terminated the employees in accordance with the contract, then that would have been fully appropriate. So it's a difficult decision to digest. When contacted, one of the former employees, Juliana Cato, seemed unaware of the ruling and told Barbados today she will now have to process it. The regional tribunal said the reason for each dismissal was alleged to be poor performance in relation to their treatment, respectively, of a particular hotel guest. But CCJ Justice Maureen Rajnoff Lee declared that the hotel's treatment of the workers with regards to its payment in lieu of notice was a breach of contract. The court found that the co company could not rely only on the letters of employment as a defense to these claims 
as no provision for payment in lieu of notice is to be found in those letters. Without resort to the rules, which includes this provision for payment in lieu of notice, dismissal with such payment in lieu would be a breach of contract and therefore wrongful. That was CCJ Judge Maureen Rajnath Lee and I'm Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. The Barbados Fire Service is expected to begin its training program in about a month's time now that the selection process of a new batch of officers has been completed. During the height of the pandemic in early 2021, Chief Fire Officer Errol Maynard indicated that an elevated level of training was required to effectively deal with the increased severity of disasters and an explosion of new technologies. He gave an update on Thursday regarding the planned training opportunities. I believe we are much closer. We are just awaiting the final approval to train some officers. They have all, all gone through their, the selection process, and we are just awaiting approval to start the training, which I believe should be something early, this, um, early next month. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Morbi, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. Two developments on the regional front. St. Lucia's Opposition United Workers' Party believes creating job opportunities for young people will help alleviate the crime situation plaguing the country. More from DBS News. Former Social Justice Minister Leonard Motut says government cannot throw its hands in the air and surrender to the current crime wave. He noted that there is a lot of talk about youth economy, but this must be converted from what he called a campaign bluff into measures to create youth employment opportunities. He also called on the government to provide the infrastructure so that more young persons can tap into gainful employment from international agencies by working from home. These measures, he says, will make inroads into the crime situation. Working from home provides a golden opportunity where our St. Lucians, our young people in particular, can remain right here in St. Lucia and gain employment even from international external agencies and companies. The government, however, must provide the environment for that kind of undertaking to thrive. We must put the infrastructure in place, provide the training to our young people to ensure that they can take advantage of this new reality. Many other opportunities, he added, exist, and not just in tourism, but also in the creative industries. Social safety net programs also came in for special attention, particularly the public assistance program to target marginalized households. But such households, he asserted, need not remain in that position. Measures should be in place to help such families recover and come off the public assistance list. And finally... The World Health Organization's Director General, Dr. Terus Gabriesus, says the disruption to health services and supplies throughout Ukraine is posing extreme risk to people with cardiovascular disease and other health problems. He said overcrowded living conditions are also causing health concerns. It's now one month since the Russian Federation invasion of Ukraine began. Almost 10 million people, nearly a quarter of Ukraine's population, have now been forcibly displaced. The humanitarian situation continues to deteriorate in many parts of the country and is critical in the Mariupol and Bucha districts. The disruption to services and supplies throughout Ukraine is posing an extreme risk to people with cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, HIV, and TB, 
which are among the country's leading causes of mortality. Displacement, poor shelter, and overcrowded living conditions caused by the conflict are also increasing the risk of diseases such as measles, pneumonia, and polio, as well as COVID-19. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.